Hello and welcome. In this video, I will explain how you can construct a binomial distribution given a certain number of trials and the probability of success. A binomial distribution is used when you want to model a number of successes in a series of independent experiments. There are two parameters in a binomial distribution, n, which represents the number of trials, and p, which is the probability of success. A standard example for a binomial distribution is when you toss a coin a certain number of times, 20 for example. In that case, the parameter n equals 20. We are interested in tossing heads, so that is defined as a success for us. In case we have a normal coin that is not tampered with, the probability of success, tossing heads, equals 0.5. Note that this is also equal to the probability of failure because we have a 50-50 chance of throwing one of them. We start by constructing the binomial probability distribution function. This function defines all the potential values and corresponding likelihoods that a random variable can take on. To do the construction, we first insert all numbers from 0 till 20. We type 0 and 1, and then extend this by dragging the selection down. These are all potential outcomes of success. So 0 means that none of our 20 tosses gave heads, 1 means that one of the 20 tosses gave heads, and so on. In the second step, we compute the probability corresponding to each potential outcome. To do this, we select cell C6 and type equals binom.dist. First, we need to insert the number of successes we want to compute the probability of. So this is 0 in cell B6. Then we need to insert the parameters of the distribution. First, the number of trials, which is 20. We fix this using the F4 button. Next, we need the probability of success, which is 0.5, and which we fix again using F4. Finally, we need to tell Excel which kind of distribution we want. In our case, we are looking for the probability distribution function and not a cumulative distribution function. So the final argument of our function is false. We enter and drag the formula down to find the probability of each potential outcome 0 till 20. Let's visualize this with a graph. We select the data, navigate to insert and click on scatter with smooth lines and markers. Now you see a scatter plot of the data. Let's add a title by double clicking on the graph's title and typing probability distribution function. A nice shape appears on the screen. Based on this graph, you can see that the most probable number of successes is 10. This is as we would expect as there is a 50-50 chance of tossing heads. The probability that you toss exactly 10 times heads is a little under 18%. The probability of tossing heads 9 or 11 times is about 16%. The rest of the curve can be read in the same way. Let's consider a corrupted coin that has an 80% chance of tossing heads, so 80% success. The only thing we have to change is our parameter, p, of the distribution. The distribution changes accordingly, and you see that it is most likely to toss heads 16 times, and this is with a probability of about 22%. Before concluding this tutorial, we will show you how to compute some different kinds of probabilities. The probabilities we want to compute are listed below. We will compute the probability of exactly 10 successes, the probability of 10 successes, or less than 10. The probability of less than 10 successes, not including 10. The probability of more than 10 successes, not including 10. Probability of more than 10 successes, including 10. And the probability that the number of successes is between 10 and 16, excluding 10 and including 16. The first one, the probability of exactly 10 successes, is already computed in our table and can be found in cell C16. The second probability of having 10 or fewer successes can be computed using the cumulative distribution function. This function defines the probability that a random variable takes on a value less than or equal to each potential value of the variable. So now it is time to introduce this one. We have already prepared this in our Excel sheet. We have copy pasted our first table for the probability distribution function, but changed the last argument in our binom.dist function to true. As you can see, the cumulative distribution function shows the probability that the actual number of successes after our 20 trials is smaller than or equal to each potential number of successes. 
As you would expect, this starts at 0 and ends at 1, because the probability of having 20 or fewer heads in 20 tosses is 100%. So the second probability in our table is defined in the cumulative distribution table at the right, in cell 016. For the third probability, we remark that the probability of having successes strictly smaller than 10 is the same as having the number of successes equal to 9 or less. So this probability can be found in cell 015 in the second table. A probability of having a number of successes strictly higher than 10 is the same as having 1 minus the number of successes smaller than or equal to 9. So to compute this probability, we type 1 minus 016. The fifth probability is the same as 1 minus the number of successes strictly smaller than 9. And this is the same as 1 minus the number of successes smaller than or equal to 8. So here we type 1 minus 0 015. Finally, to compute the probability that our number of successes is between 10 and 16, excluding 10 and including 16, we again try to rewrite this in an easier way. We remark that this is the same as computing the probability that the number of successes is smaller than or equal to 16 minus the probability that the number of successes is smaller than or equal to 10. So here we select cell 022, capturing the probability of having a number of successes smaller than or equal to 16 minus cell 016, capturing the probability of having a number of successes smaller than or equal to 10. This concludes our tutorial on the binomial distribution in Excel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software-related tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.